Hey Savvy Devs, it's Savvy Nick here, and today we'll be going through how to install Kali Linux. We'll first download it, then I'll explain how to flash it onto a disk, we'll boot that disk and finally run through how to install it on an empty storage space of your choice. If you're new and stopping by to watch and install today, please take a moment to subscribe below and hit the notification bell for more installs. I'm here on the Kali.org website, I'll put a link in the description below where we're gonna go ahead and select a download for Kali Linux. But one thing I wanna go over real quick is that Kali Linux has just had a new release, the 2019.4 release. You should check this out and see all the new things that they're offering because there are quite a few exciting things that they're offering with this new release of Kali Linux. And that includes a new undercover mode, which is really cool. You'll have to check it out once you have Kali installed, as well as they've changed the default desktop environment over to XFCE since GNOME had too much overhead in their words here. So we're going to go back to the top where we see the download section. You can go ahead and just hit downloads or hit the download Kali Linux. And once we're on their download page, you can scroll down a little bit and see all the different types of Kali Linux install images that you have available to you. There's two different ways. You can either click the image name, which will go to a direct mirror and download Kali Linux for you. And it will download the Kali Linux ISO installer for you. Or you can take the torrent version if you have some kind of a torrent software that you want to use to download it. There are different versions here. You have the basic Kali Linux install image. You also have the light image as well as this different desktop environments. Like I said, XFCE is the default now, and they also have Mate, GNOME, KDE, LXDE, and even an image for a different architecture here, which you see the ARM HF. Uh, there are a few more things available down here for virtual machines. We're not going to get into those, as well as weekly builds that they have, and they can have some instruction here for you if you want those. So we're gonna go back to the top, and we're going to select the Kali Linux 64-bit base here. Since I have a 64-bit based architecture on the computer that I'm trying to install it on, go ahead and click that and it'll start the download right away. If your browser asks you to go ahead and allow the download, go ahead and do so. And as you can see, we've started the download process now. And now that I've downloaded the ISO, I'm going to launch and use the Belenna Etcher app in order to flash the image onto a USB or CD of my choice. Belenna Etcher is an easy to use application available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below if you want to download the application. You can also use any other application that can create a bootable disk. So the first thing we'll do here in Belenna Etcher is select an image, and that's going to be the image that we just got done downloading. As you can see here, we have the Kali Linux 2019.4 release for the AMD 64-bit architecture, so just the 64-bit architecture. Go ahead and open that up, and then you're gonna select a target. Well, I don't have a USB in my computer yet, or a CD, so I'm gonna insert one real quick. Here's a USB, and it will automatically populate if you're just inserting one in. If you have multiple USBs, CDs, or DVDs, you can go ahead and select them in this menu here, where it says select a drive. Make sure to go ahead and select the proper disk where you want to flash the image to because it will erase all of the content on that disk whenever you hit flash. So you want to make sure that you have a USB, CD, or DVD that's completely empty. Go ahead and hit continue. And then once you're ready to flash, you can go ahead and hit the flash button. And now it's going to start flashing the image onto the selected disk. And after you've flashed a disk, you'll take it over to the computer or server where you want to install Kali Linux on, and then insert it. Then you'll have to boot into your BIOS in order to change the settings around and select the newly created bootable disk to be the first to boot. This is usually done by finding the correct key to boot into BIOS for your particular computer. It's usually one of the F keys, like F2 or F10. And then you'll find a tab usually called boot order and exchange the order so that the bootable disk is first to boot. After you have that set up, you will save and exit out of your BIOS and you'll see a screen similar to this if you did everything correctly. If you went ahead and made it this far, please hit the like button. It really does help me out. 
And if you see this screen, you've successfully made it to the install portion of Kali Linux. And the option that we want here is to skip all these live options. You can use the live option if you want to just try out Kali Linux without installing it, of course. But what we're more interested in is installing it. And we also have the option of the graphical install, which is what we're going to use since it makes things a little easier for us. So go ahead and select that, hit enter. Let's give it a few moments to load here. And the first screen on the installer is to select the language. English is fine for me. You can select whatever you want. Go ahead and hit continue once you have that. Next is to select your location. The United States is fine for me. Select whatever country, territory, or area that you're in and hit continue. On this screen, we're going to select which keyboard we want to use. The key map for me is the American English keyboard, which is the default here. Make sure to go ahead and select the proper keyboard for you. Hit continue, give it a moment here. Now it's asking us to go ahead and select a host name for this computer. What we'll use, what I'll use is a savvy nick for me. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit continue. You can choose whatever you want your host name to be. You can also specify a domain name, name at this point. I don't have one, so I'm going to go ahead and hit continue. And on this screen, we're asked to set up the root user. So select a root password and go ahead and verify that password in the second field. You can also choose the checkbox to show your password if you want in order to verify that you're typing it incorrectly. Otherwise, it's going to go ahead and put these circles in for you. Go ahead and hit the continue key once you're ready to move on. Next, we're going to configure the clock by selecting a time zone. So today I'm going to be in Hawaii. I'm going to select Hawaii and hit continue. Now we're going to go ahead and select what kind of partitioning scheme we want to use and uh, whether we want to use the guided method or manually setting things up for more advanced users if you'd like to manually adjust your partitions. The standard guided method and to use the entire disk is fine by me, so I'm going to go ahead and hit that and hit continue. Next, we're going to get a list of all available storage spaces in our computer currently, and this is the only one for me, this uh, 40 gig hard drive here, so that's the one I'm going to select. Make sure you select the proper disk that you want to install Kali Linux on. Also, because the disk that you select will have all of its data erased, so go ahead and make sure that you're using a disk where you have no data on, and that it's a clean disk where you plan on overwriting whatever's currently on there. So if you're confident you have the proper disk selected, go ahead and hit continue. Next, we're going to go ahead and select a partitioning scheme. So go ahead and use the all files in one partition, since it's recommended for new users, unless you have a idea on making some type of a different partitioning scheme. As you can tell here, there's two other options, but the recommended for new users one is just fine for me, so I'm gonna hit continue there. And on this page, it's just gonna go ahead and tell you what types of changes it's going to make to the physical hard disk. So you can see here that it's gonna allocate 3.9 gigabytes of EXT formatted space to the primary partition and then a logical partition number five here, which is gonna be swap, and there's about 8.6 gigabytes reserved for that one. All it wants you to do is go ahead and configure that you want all these changes made, and to finish partitioning and writing those changes to the disk, we'll hit continue. It's gonna want you to go ahead and verify one more time that you wanna write those changes to the disk. I'm confident that I'm ready to do that and that I have nothing else on the disk where I'm writing these changes to. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit continue. And at this point, the Kali installer is installing the base system. So Kali Linux is a Debian-based distribution with a focus in pen testing, forensics, and security. The main focus of Kali is to supply tools for users and developers to test their software and networks and find vulnerabilities before they can get exploited by others. It's a great distribution if you're interested in cybersecurity, and there's even classes out there that are offered based around Kali Linux. It's really made a name for itself over the last few years in various communities and continues to be one of the top distributions for security and testing. They also have documentation for beginners as well as advanced users with examples that help you set up various scenarios that you can test with Kali.
And at this stage, you can use a network mirror in order to install any supplemental software that's not included in the installation media. So you can go ahead and select yes or no here. I'm going to go ahead and select yes since I do want updates. And following that, it asks you if you want to use a proxy in order to go ahead and access the internet. You can go ahead and put a proxy in if you do want to use one. Here's the format. I don't have one, so I'm going to go ahead and hit continue here. It's going to spend a few moments and set up the package manager. And on this screen, it's asking you if you want to go ahead and install the Grub bootloader on the master boot record. Since we do not have any other operating systems alongside this install of Kali Linux, this is fine. If you select no and you don't have another system with a bootloader, you won't be able to boot in properly to your newly installed Kali Linux distribution. Most of the time you want to go ahead and make sure you select yes unless you do have a bootloader already installed. So go ahead and hit continue here. And now it's just asking you where you want to install it. So the new disk that we created, the SDA is fine by me. So go ahead and select that disk. If it finds more than one disk, you're going to want to make sure that you select the proper disk in order to install the bootloader because you don't want to be messing up another hard disk image by installing a bootloader over another one. So go ahead and hit continue. Give it a moment to install the bootloader and finalize the installation here. At this point, the installer is complete. And while you're rebooting, you'll want to make sure to go ahead and remove any installation media that you may have in your computer currently so you don't boot back into the installer. Otherwise, it will force you to reboot once again and remove that media in order to get to your newly installed system. So let's go ahead and hit continue and start the reboot process. So now since the system is booted, we can go ahead and log in with our root user that we created. Make sure you put in a password. Give it a moment to start up here. And welcome to your brand new Kali Linux desktop. Congratulations if you've made it this far. You have now successfully installed Kali Linux. So let's go ahead and just take a quick look around. As you see here on the desktop, we have just a couple options. The file system, a trash bin, and the file manager. On the top left, we have an icon to go ahead and get you into the start menu as well as as well as minimizing and maximizing all the open windows on the desktop to open up your folder to the root folder as well as a terminal to use if you want to go ahead and use Kazam you can do that to record a video or take a screenshot of your computer you can switch workspaces up here as well and then on the far right side you have a few options of logging out as well as shutting down restarting the computer in the far right it tells you how much battery power you have left if you have a laptop as well as any notifications that you might have such as updates volume control as well as the current connected wired or wireless connection i hope you enjoyed this installation tutorial of kali linux and if you have any questions comments or suggestions please post them in the comment section below and also make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video thanks for watching